What is going on YouTube? So I wanted to come back today. Um, I keep doing the car setting for these videos, but wanted to come back today with uh, another video. Um, I, you know, the first two I covered were in general about college football, the NFL, Johnny Mansell college football playoff, that sort of stuff. Um, wanted to come back today with um, one of uh, concerning the Olympics. I know that when the Summer Olympics came around last time, I covered that. Uh, to a decent degree. Um, mainly, I wanted to talk about a sport that's one of my favorites, if not my favorite sport, um, and that's hockey in the U.S. and the disappointment of USA hockey over the past, oh, eight, seven years. It, the, the 2010 Olympics were all right. I mean, very exciting to see the way that finished back back in uh, back in 2010 against Canada. But um, this round of the Olympics, it, it, between losing to Slovenia, um, you know, getting dominated by Russia, and, and then losing last night to the Czechs, it's hard to say that this was not a disappointment for U.S. hockey this time around in the Olympics. Now, um, it, it's hard to model consistencies between the 2014 and 2018 teams because obviously the NHL allowed its players to play in one one games and not in the other um, and obviously I, I have my own issue with that about you know Gary Bettman coming out and saying that um, the NHL players were gonna play through the Olympics um, in the NHL and that the Olympics were essentially gonna be, be you know become a bunch of former NHL players and AHL all-star teams um, now like I said, you look at the consistencies between the 2014 and the 2018 teams. Uh, first of all, being really disappointing results against teams where the, maybe the U.S. wasn't favored per se, but games that the U.S. could have very easily won. Um, I, I start with um, jumping back to 2014 and the way those games ended with that loss to Finland. Um, in the, what was that, the bronze medal game? And, and it just got dominated by Finland. It wasn't really even close. Now, you jump forward to the U.S.'s first game in the 2018 Olympics. comes against Slovenia. Um, I believe a team that did not win a single other, uh, single other game in this Olympic Games besides beating the U.S. in overtime. Now, the U.S. controlled that game most of the way. Um, and also, uh, I'll give credit to Ryan Sapolsky and Ned. He had, a, at least in that game, played pretty well. Um, the U.S., they, they did everything right for most of the game, just let it go at the end. And against a team like Slovenia that, that you know is going to have a lot of fight, you just can't do that. Um, you got to play a complete 60 minutes, and that just falls back on... Uh, that, that falls back, I don't maybe on the culture of U.S. hockey as a whole. Um, you know, they played well last night too against the Czech Republic but again just could not finish off the game um, my so uh, the purpose of this I guess rant essentially for me is not to bash US hockey individually it's not to um, it's not to give my personal ideas for improvement it's to give my thoughts on what U.S. hockey should reflect on from the past two Olympics and, you know, where I think they can go from there. Now, the next Winter Olympic game is going to be 2022, and who knows if the NHL is going to allow players to play in that game. So obviously, if you have NHL players playing, the uh, results of the Olympics completely switches. You know, uh, the U.S., Sweden, Canada, Russia uh, get, get an immediate boost, but obviously Russia benefit, I think, the most from not having NHL players play. Um, it, it, like I said, if you reflect back from the 2014 to the 2018 Olympics, I do believe that the U.S. ended up having some, um, four, three, four straight losses, three, I think three straight losses between, um, between when the 2014 Olympics ended and the 2018 Olympics began. Uh, I, I think it is three. Anyway, um not a good stretch to get into. They they reversed that by getting a couple big wins over the Slovaks. The only two wins that came for the U.S. in this Olympics were against Slovakia. I believe it was 2-1 to one the first time around. 2-1, uh, to one, I believe it was the first time around. And then 5-1, uh, to one, where they just absolutely blew Slovakia out of the water the second time around. That was 
two days ago, I believe. And last night, a disappointing loss to the Czechs that would have gotten the U.S. in a quarterfinal or a semifinal position, excuse me, um, and gotten them into the medal rounds. But um, that's, like I said, that just didn't become a reality. So this is going to be two straight Olympics without U.S. hockey even getting a medal. Um, at this point, I think U.S. hockey is developed enough to the point where U.S. should not just be in medal contention every time, but should be winning a medal. Um, the U.S. talent-wise, I believe, is pretty consistently one of the top three or four team, or countries in the world now. Um, you know, you look at the consistencies of the other teams. Uh, Russia always brings in a lot of talent, but they're a little bit top-heavy. Um, yeah, obviously, you got Sweden, um, Canada, you know, Finland, Czech Republic tend to be that next tier down. Um, Slovakia also in there as well. Uh, but it, mostly the U.S. should be up there with Canada, Sweden, and Russia. With Canada, Sweden, and Russia in terms of the best teams in the world. And um, I, I don't think there is many excuses as to why we would drop below that. Uh, doing that two Olympics in a row, again, despite the differences in the roster, I think is something that should should be considered inexcusable um, and reversed for the for the next set of Olympics. Now, again, a lot depends on if they use Olympic players or, or if they use uh, NHL athletes for the Olympics or if they just go with the kind of same setup they had now. Uh, if they go with the same setup they had now, I guess you build chemistry a little bit, have an idea of what the next team will look like, um, but also to, you know, kind of get a feel of, what the U.S. has to do in general to compete with uh, Canada and Russia and Sweden when, you know, they're not going to be some top-tier talent playing in the Olympics. My concluding thoughts on this game or on these games for the U.S. Olympic team was that it, it was, you know, it was a fun team to watch. Ryan Donato definitely had his uh, definitely had his moment. Um, what do you finish up with? Five goals, six goals. Um, in, in this round of the Olympics, it's cool to see um, a player like Brian Giant get to captain the team. Um, you also got to see a, a little bit of what the future is going to look like. There are a few solid college players on the U.S. team um, that are just kind of in the pipeline right now, still playing juniors, maybe waiting to uh, get their shot with the NHL team that drafted them. Um, and then I think it was cool to get to see some of. Uh, maybe more the underrated goalies that are from the U.S. Like I said, Ryan Zapolsky as a whole, I think he had a decent Olympics. It's it's hard to compare the U.S. when they gave up four goals to Russia because Russia, I think, far and away had the most talented offense um, in this Olympics. Um, any team that has Pavel Datsuk and Ilya Kovalchuk taking on, um, like I said, essentially a couple AHL all-star teams, by the way, these teams were structured. Um, it, it, that's that's not really fair. I mean, Ilya Kovalchuk would still be, I think he'd still be probably a 30, 40 goal scorer if you bring him back to the U.S. right now um, and have him played in the NHL. It was he 32 now, so he did, definitely would still, maybe not be in a, exactly in his prime, but uh, should would still have a couple you know really good years left. Um, so like I said, that that's really my concluding thoughts on this Olympics. It was definitely an interesting change. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll be watching it all the way through, but that's mainly I, I'm, I'm just a little bit disappointed in the outcome for U.S. hockey. Um, and I'm looking forward to hopefully NHL athletes being in the next Olympics so that we can get to see, you know, Olympic hockey at the top level and not uh, just really stuck at, um, I guess, not amateur athletes really, but you know, like I said, some second grade players. But anyway. Uh, that'll pretty much do it. Like I said, I'll, pr I'll try to come back today with a few more videos concerning college football and kind of get back on that subject. But with the Olympics around right now, I think that's a good subject to you know, discuss as well, something that probably most people are watching, especially if you're a sports fan. But anyway, that'll pretty much do it. See ya.